Carl, uh, we're back in the dugout. Um, preparations for the 2015 season are well underway now. Uh, you must be pleased to almost have the core of the squad ready uh, before pre-season's even begun. Yeah, we are. We're, you know, we're we're really ahead of ourselves, and you know, we've got a real decent squad we're putting together, and they're all back in training on the, on the 17th of this month, which. I know Cookie can't wait for that to get them all back in and, and start doing his testing and that. Um, Stuart Sanderson signed his contract last night, which is great to have him around the place. He's he's been with us for some time now, and his value is real good value for the team. The right things, and he's a, he's a good fit lad, and and he trains hard, and that's what we want at the club. And he knows what we're all about, and we're we're happy to keep Sando because he's a great bloke as well. Stuart were also responsible for quite a number of goals which we won quite a few games by fine margins last season so it must be pleasing to uh, to have him signed. Yeah and that's a, another string to his bow and I know you know Stuart's getting close to the back end of his career and he works really hard on his goal kicking and you know things like that can sway sometimes a decision with Paul who's picking the team and you know his success rate at kicking the goals like you said was real good and like I say, I know he works really hard on that side of his game and you know he's he's looking forward to the season. He understands, he was quizzing me about who's these young fellas going to be snapping at his heels and things like that, which, you know, that's good. That's that's what we want and, and he, you know, he's having a bit of crack with me and saying, come on, tell me who these ones I need to look out for. So, and, and to be fair to Stuart, he'll he'll look after them as well. He'll, he'll try and teach them to do the right things and, you know, there'd be no one more pleased than Stuart uh, if they get in and and do a good job and, and I know for a fact he'll he'll help these young kids out and he'll, like I say he'll teach them the right right things to do. It's going to be an exciting season next season down here at the Keep Moat Stadium. Uh, Sheffield Eagles are going to be ground sharing and there's going to be full of uh, double headers on Sundays. Uh, you know can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah um, obviously you know the we, we made an announcement that that was going to happen. Um, you know sometimes it's hard that you want to consult with people and you want to speak to people about decisions but there's sometimes you just you know everything's confidential and or when there's contracts to be signed and sensitive and you know information and that you you have to keep it close and we um we did that and we we made the decision and you know obviously i'm not going to get it right all the time and you know i i, I do seek um you know and I do go and seek people's input when I'm, I'm making these decisions and, and people that I respect in the game. Uh, so it, it was a decision that we really looked at hard and you know we thought about everyone for it and that financially it was great for us. Um, so for the Dons, you know we're very fortunate you know the owners of our club hold the lease so we were involved in, in the talks from day one. Um, on a selfish point of view I'm a rugby league man through and through and you know, if we can get some more people coming through the turnstiles with, for the Dons and, the, and, you know, watching a couple of quality games might help that. Um, it, it's for 12 months at this stage because, you know, their stadium's getting built and if their stadium's built, they move back to Sheffield in 12 months' time. Uh, but like I said, it was real good. It, it was. It's a good decision for Doncaster Rugby League and we're not going to please everyone on, on these decisions I make and, and you know what? If anyone wants to throw stones at someone, they can throw them at me because it was a decision that I made, um, and I made it in the best interest for our club. So, you know, I hope hope it works, and only time will tell. Uh, there is another little bit of an issue that I just want to clear up there as as well. Um, last season we finished fourth, and it was only brought to me attention by one of the players. Uh, you know, when I was speaking to him negotiating his contract, that. He um he he says what happened to the two hundred thousand we won last year, so I just thought I said what two hundred thousand know, we we never won no two hundred thousand last season. What happened was where you finished last year it sort of seeded you on your two thousand and fifteen distributions, so that's where the confusions come along. So we didn't win any prize money whatsoever last season, um, and, and like I say the the players thought we did, I think. So that presumably, I, straight away, I thought the fans think we did, um, and that wasn't the case. But I can assure everyone that the distribution we did, we are receiving for 2015, 
every single penny of that has gone into the plane budget so nobody's taken our money or nobody uh, is you know keeping some back the whole the full amount and some has gone into um, the plane budget which you know myself and cookie are really grateful for because like we say if it, we they could have held some back or and, and things like that and you know the uh, reverting back now I, I hope i've cleared that situation up because it was such an easy insight for people to to a mistake for people to make and especially the way it was perceived in the papers and that so hopefully that that's put to bed we we didn't win any two hundred thousand pound cash uh, uh prize money in 2014. Regards again the, the Sheffield thing, there was a little bit of confusion, uh, not a confusion, a little bit of a few people unhappy with the um, the kickoff time. <laughs> again, myself, Paul, uh, we discussed this before the Sheffield um, decision to come here, even before we even knew Sheffield wanted to come here. The, the players had requested maybe looking at some games on a Friday or a Saturday, you know, Friday night, Saturday a bit earlier kickoff times. I'm not saying it would have happened, um, but what I am saying is potentially we we, w we might have kicked off earlier as well. And probably if, if it, the players had their way a little bit earlier than the two o'clock, because the only reason we couldn't was because of the car boot sale. So we had them initial discussions internally before we ever knew Sheffield was going to come here. So, you know, we make these decisions not on a whim. We, we really think about things and we looked at the fixtures and, and then stuff like that and you know the coach is very meticulous and he might he thinks an hour could change his whole preparation for the next week if, you know we're going to go and travel to Workington or Whitehaven or, or them games he'd, he'd like us to play a little bit earlier on the Sunday if we could just so we can you know have a couple of extra hours and you know that coaches think like that and, and that's and that's what we discussed um, never went any further than the discussion at, at this stage so you know we we know we're not going to please everybody but hopefully we make the right decisions for the club and you know like i say only time will tell but you know i'm really really looking forward to next season when you when you think of being able to come to doncaster on a sunday and dons are playing bradford bulls and then the game after sheffield eagles against halifax well You'd like to think there'd be a fair few thousand people here and, you know, if we can all play well, if, if the Dons can play well that day, then we can grab these supporters and, and keep hold of them for future years. And you know, That's where the area at the club we really needed to focus and improve was the ticks through the turnstiles. So um, hopefully this, this will do it. And then, you know, like I say, I think you only need to watch two or three games of rugby league before you come hooked. And, and that's the focus and that's the goal. And... You know, we've got a real good good squad next year and, uh, you know, I'll be honest, the, our players, will they'll have a go at, and we know what sort of players we've got and and Paul can get the best out of out of our boys and the boys are just looking forward to it. I know they are and we they can't wait to get back in training and, and, and this is just after the, uh, the conversations I've had with Stu last night and I've been on the phone with Mike Emmett today and, you know, the players are... They can't wait. They've had enough rest now, and they, and they just want to get stuck into it. So everything's positive for 2015, and and like I say, I just hopefully the I've cleared a few issues up there with for the supporters, and you know that it hasn't gone down. It hasn't gone down too bad. The the news has gone down okay. I think you know uh, they can see the reasonings, and you know I just wanted to clear a couple of things up, and and hopefully I've done that.